Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series where we're going to take a look at marker tracks. So marker tracks allow you to place markers which may seem fairly obvious but there's actually a couple of types of markers and they can be pretty useful. So we're going to take a look at them now. Now first things first you will need a marker track. You'd add that in the normal way. We go further down the menu into the depths and pick marker track. So we've added marker track here. I'm going to move this to the top to make it a little clearer. So we've got our markers here. Now we've got two types of markers. We've got these markers, which are just single markers, and then we've got a cycle marker. So first thing first, the normal markers. Now these I find are really useful. Often I will listen through a track and I want to make notes on it. And I want to make precise notes about what's happening. So Let's say we're just listening through a track and you come to a certain point where you think, oh, that needs fixing. The great part of this is you can just drop a marker as you go just by clicking this button. So I'm just going to play this. Uh, not everything is here because this is a Mac and I don't have any of my synths installed on here. So as we're trolling along through this, and I decide I want to change something, I'm just going to click this marker button here and it creates a marker. Now, if you're writing your notes, you could just say one, I hate this part or whatever, or you can add a description in here. So let's say I'll go, white ends too soon, etc. And you can just you can just add all of your notes as you go through there. Say so often what I will do is I will just actually add the markers and then write notes because I can write faster than I can type while I'm doing this kind of thing but you may find it different. So they're really useful for that. They're great for just marking things, whether or not it's hits when you've got things you need to match on a video or whatever. There's loads of uses for markers, but say just being able to mark sections. So you could say, oh, you know, verse two or whatever. You can mark out the structure of your song as well. All sorts of things. You can move them around after you've made them. They obey snap and so on. So really useful for that. So that's your standard markers. Now the other kind of markers which I find useful for editing and when I'm working on things is cycle markers. So let's say there was a section of the song you just wanted to work on and you'd set up a cycle around it. So in fact I'm just going to set around there. Let's say you're working on this a bit and then you're working on this section a bit and you keep having to reset your uh, markers so you can cycle around them. Now you can have a cycle marker. So that's what this button with the two does. So if I click this, it marks where my left and right locator are. And they are very easy to use. I will show you that in a second. So you can set these exactly the same way as you did the others. So we can give them a name, so we can call it breakdown, and then I can move maybe move my locators to here and then I'm going to name that one to quiet or something like that. So I can move between these really easy using this cycle button. So let's say I want to cycle this one. I just click on there and then I go to breakdown and you see my left and right locators have moved to there. I can go back to this one if I want to, etc. Now you can also locate these. So if you want to go to a specific marker, if you can't find it, I, I never use the locate for these because you think, well, I can see it, etc. But if you've got hundreds of them or whatever, you can click here and then you can go to exactly where you want. And that includes the beginning of these cycle markers as well. But if you want to go to marker one, you just click that and you're there. I would spend a bit of time, again, as with all of these things, just spend a bit of time thinking, oh yeah, I can use this because it's not it's not all the time. But often I find I use cycle markers either where I've got a long recording, such as the ones I do for videos, and I want to mark out different sections, particularly if I'm going to come back to it later on because I might record these in the morning and then uh, either mix them down later on in the day or sometimes, you know, a week later, etc. And just making markers and just saying, oh, this is this video, this is that video inside the same project makes it really easy to do. There is another thing. When you come to export, on the full version of Cubase, so here in Elements we get this, this basic version, but on the full version we get the option to export 
marker ranges. So you could have a whole load of things set up in markers. So if you are using uh, Keybase Pro, particularly if you've taken advantage of the, the offer that's uh, available at the time that I'm recording this, then you get the option to export individual marker ranges, which means if you set a lot of those up, you can do those and they can be named, etc. But that's a bit more advanced. But certainly for marking out sections and say, particularly if you're moving your markers from one section to another, if you're working on two different sections of a song, trying to get them, you know, similar, etc., then just using cycle markers can be really useful. And I mostly use markers for marking things so just saying you know this is things that i need to fix etc because it's so much easier than trying to write down bars and beats time etc on a bit of paper so that's a quick introduction to marker tracks and the two different types of markers on there i hope you found that useful and i'll see you again soon